Hello guys and welcome to Top Channel One on One. So today we're going to be looking at how to make this magical, spherical, I don't know, crystal ball, a cane thing. As you might know, I'm trying to learn Godot, and I was watching this tutorial by uh, Games, uh, by Game Development Center. It's uh, how to make this a cane, a looking ball in Godot. I was watching the tutorial and I was like, can't this be done in Blender? So I gave it a try, and uh, and these are the results that I came out. That I came up with, and uh, I think they re they really look amazing. Uh, you can see it's a three D ball with uh, a, a some type of energy in uh, in there. So yeah, this is uh, something inspiration I picked from uh, from uh, Game Developer Center Development Center. It was a Godot tutorial, and I thought I could uh, make a Blender version of this. And I think yeah, if you want to watch the Godot uh, this Godot video, I'll be leaving a link in the description. But you're also going to need uh, this asset pack uh, from Kenny. He's a game developer who makes free assets uh, that uh, he gives away uh, on his website. And uh, the asset pack, you can just go to, you don't have to sign up, you don't have to do what, you just uh, download the assets. And uh, the assets are just, uh, just simple textures like this. As you know, uh, splites like this I use a lot in game engines to save on memory. And so I thought maybe I could also try using uh, them in Blender because the the systems are not that different. Uh, they are all 3D applications and uh, they their particle systems all look identical. As I looked at uh, Godot tutorial, his Godot tutorial, I saw nearly the same settings he was using were, were available in Blender. So let's jump right in. Uh, you can uh, again find the links in the description. Uh, you find a link to this uh, tutorial if you want to watch uh, the Godot version and you also find the link to this uh, kenny.nl uh, website where you can download the assets that we are going to be using. It's just a simple uh, texture uh, image and uh, and uh, open up a new blend file. And I think I'll be doing this a lot more, trying to find interesting tutorials that are in a different application and try to see if I, they can tr I can transfer the knowledge into Blender. So let's jump right in. We're going to start with a particle system and uh, we're going to create a new plane and go in to the particle system, add a new particle system. Um, maybe let me have this side by side. Uh, let's have this side by side. You can see if we play back, we have a lot of particles just falling down, so we can go to the particle settings. Uh, by the way, this is all rendering in Eevee. We can go into the particle settings and uh, try to make sure that the particles are also emitted as what we're seeing here. So the first thing we'll notice is that uh, the particles are falling down. That's a result of gravity. So we can go to the field settings, turn off gravity, so that we just have particles. Uh, right now, they're going up, so we can go to the velocity and uh, remove the normal velocity so that particles are just in one place, emitted in one place. Are like that. Now the particles we are using here are just a textures, a texture on a plane with an alpha channel and um, an emissive material to give that uh, that look. So we're going to create a plane. Uh, this is going to be our uh, texture or our particle, like that. And I remember this texture pack. You can just get. I think I'm using Spark 4. I think he also used Spark 4. So I wanted to be uh, true to the to the tutorial and I try to follow what he did. Uh, in the same settings, uh, using the same settings, and uh, so I'm going to go with this as well and create a new material here. Create a new material. Now we don't need the principle. Actually, I need to zoom in closer so that we can like that. Okay, so we don't need the, the principle. We just need a transparency and then an emission, an emission shader. We can blend the two, and now we have. That. Now we can bring in this texture, drag it in, connect. Uh, this image comes with alpha, and uh, so you can use all, either the color or alpha channel. It will all work. So if you use the color channel, we should see we should see something like that. If I use uh, the alpha channel, we should see something like that. You can see they, they can all work. Uh, but uh, we're seeing the, we don't, we're not seeing the details. But that's because in, if you're using Eevee. You need to go to the material settings and turn on alpha blend. And now uh, we can get that. You can see the alpha channel and the, if you use any of these, uh, they should all work fine. I uh, might lose a few details in the color channel, but uh, you can bring that, that back using a math node here. Change this to something like uh, multiply and uh, you can control now uh, the amount of detail you're seeing. Let's just stick to the alpha channel as that is going to give us a little bit, a little bit more detail. Let me minimize this so that we can see what the, our example. And uh, then I can control the color here using uh, this. Let's set this to 100. Okay, maybe that's too much. Let's set this to 50 around there. And I'm going to go into 
world mode here. Uh, go to the settings here, to the EV render settings, turn on bloom, turn on uh, screen space reflections because we are going to use a globe that is reflective that will also help with the ref reflections and uh, turn on refractions as well uh, since we are, we are going to use the refractions as well here. Uh, so my world here is a bit too bright so I'm going to bring that down so that uh, we have a dark world uh, like that. You can still control, the, we want to control how much of the of this texture we see or control how the alpha channel looks. Just add a math node here and to give us that control we can use the power operation and uh, that will just help us control the brightness without losing a lot of detail. So something like that is good. Yeah, that is what we have. Now we can go to the particles and uh, in the render setting, in the particle settings, we can go under render settings and change from hello to object and then select this as our object. You can see what we are getting. Now the particles are disappearing quite a lot. Uh, so I'm going to go here and uh, first of all, let me first increase uh, the count here. So the size of the particles and, uh, and uh, play with the particle rotation. Let me first scale the emitter down significantly. And uh, another thing you will notice is that uh, the particles are rotated the wrong direction. So we can play with the rotation here. If I turn on rotation, turn on random, randomize uh, the rotation a bit like that. But uh, because we are emitting from a, from a plane like this, we're not really getting that spherical shape. So I'm going to change our source from, uh, from uh, faces to vertices and I scale these four vertices to to a small point like that so it's nearly just a single point we have too many particles so i'm going to use something like 250 particles and i change the end frame to 250 as well 250 250 as well like that and uh, let me zoom in on this go to the camera a bit here i can hide this for, for now we also want to randomize as a scale just a bit let's try 50 particles yeah you don't want too many particles let's try a hundred something like that uh, let me recenter my camera a bit like that now our particles are not are just jumping into the scene uh, this is the effect he had in uh, in his tutorial uh, he wanted that kind of electric uh, effect and if you want that effect, you can go with that. But uh, I want m more of a, a softer uh, transition, a so like uh, this here, instead of just that kind of electrical uh, stuff going on. So to do that, I'm just going to go under the textures uh, because I want to influence how uh, the scale of the particles, and I want to, the, to I want them to start out smaller and then grow in size and then fade in, fade out as in size as bit. Uh, well. Uh, as well like uh, we're seeing here. One thing you will notice is that uh, our particles here have some slight uh, rotation. So to do that, I'm just going to go under the rotation, turn on dynamic and uh, give this some angular uh, rotation. And this should also should uh, be based on randomness. I uh, should be, yes, set to randomness, I uh, like that. We still have that uh, jumpy stuff because our particles are just jumping into existence instead of just fading into existence uh, giving us a more tra uh, smoother translation so let's scroll down to the textures and uh, add a new texture go into that texture set up a new blend texture now the particles will disappear for a minute go just go to the influence turn off generated time and uh, just set the influence to be size because we want to affect the size of our particles now this here it's just a, a timeline. This gradient is basically represents up, represents the timeline of the lifetime of our particles. So the, the left represents the beginning of our particle, the particle's life, and uh, the right represents the end of our life, uh, of our particle's life. Then the colors represent the scale of the particles, uh, since we or the size of the particle, since we have it as the influence. So black represents a zero scale, and then white represents a uh, uh, full scale. So so if we go to the uh, color ramp here, activate it, we can adjust this here so that at the beginning, the particles can start out small. Uh, let me bring the alpha channel up. 
uh, the particles can start out small and then at the end they can just become darker like that one other thing you need to make sure to do is that uh, you need to go to the mapping change this from generated uh, to strand stroke particle otherwise your particles will not show now you can see that uh, we have that random effect going on now if you want your particles to be around a bit, bit a little bit longer you can change this to 100 you can change the lifetime to 100 that will also make the scaling of the particles a bit more smoother and i can even go back to the texture here change this from linear to bisp line uh, to get a more smoother transition uh, just like that so something like that it fades in now if you don't want to start with the particles fading in you can just go to the particle settings and uh, uh, change the start frame to a negative value so it's something like negative 100 and uh, you will always start with uh, with the sphere there directly it won't just start small and then grow but i like the transition there where it starts out small uh, so i'll start at frame one uh, so i can start so the sphere can grow like that uh, i want to adjust the colors a bit here maybe so we can get the same colors make this look yeah something like that you can even increase the strength of the emission just like that now i also want to have the sphere the sphere is very simple we just need our uv sphere centered scale it down you can even let some of these particles intersect uh, it, i th think it's not too big of an issue but uh, uh okay then just make sure that not, none of these particles intersect i guess that would also be a cool effect just look at that nice maybe a sun effect so uh, i want to scale this up okay so to make this uh, we're going to give it a glass material uh, so i'm going to have the transmission up and i can even let me just look at this in look dev here and uh, have this okay the first thing i'm going to do is remove uh, the reflections and uh, make sure this material we have just created has a uh, blend mode turned on and uh, we don't need shadows uh, now if you have this weird line in the middle just make sure you have back face curling and i should get rid of that and also turn on screen space reflection refractions uh, just make sure that uh, you also have that on in the screen space reflections in uh, in the render settings uh, and uh, we have something like that now you notice that uh, we don't really see it in the render preview here uh, because we don't really have anything we don't have any hdri image uh, to reflect uh, we don't have any objects to reflect uh, on the ball so what i'm going to do is just add uh, an uh, area light up here scale that up maybe make it less powerful so it's like that nice okay then we can add more build on top of this i'm going to select this material let me also give it a subdivision so that the sphere is more smoother it's more smooth so yeah this is what we have but i also want to add more effects to this so i'm going to first reduce the transmission the transmission of the ball uh that will allow us to add some bit of color to the ball because if you don't have the transmission turned down you won't be able to see any color because let's say if i bring this up you barely see the color but, uh, the more you bring that in uh, the more you see the color another thing we could do is also uh bring the alpha down a bit but we don't want to just use this slider we can make the effect more cooler by using a layer weight or fresnel effect so if i look at that it just gives us that uh, that uh kind of yeah centered mask and uh, i'm going to use a color ramp here connect this to the alpha that that should uh, play the play with the blending Like that okay then another thing we could do is uh, add in some reflections like that uh, that are animated so to do that I'm just going to use my texture folders add on to bring in some grunge maps because I have a grunge map folder by the way if you want to get this add-on links are provided in the chat it really helps out the channel so let me gra grab this uh, grunge map import here 
Uh, is this the best one I could use? Let me look at how it looks. Too scaled up. I'm just going to use object mapping. And uh, the, you should use object mapping because it's going to really help out when we are animating these textures. Change this to box. Increase the blend mode. Now to add the animation, all you need is uh, separate user combine XY to separate the rotation components I like that. And now uh, you can type in frame hash hashtag frame hash frames and that will animate the rotation based on the number of frames we have. But that's too fast, so I'm going to divide this by 10. Uh, that should uh, make it slower. Maybe divide it by 50 like that. If we plug this directly into the roughness, yeah, hopefully you can see those better. Uh, I think I could add, we can add a math node here just to make those reflections more, control the reflections. I'm going to change the, the operation to multiply. So I can make them more pronounced. And I remember this uh, alpha channel, you can also make them more pronounced. Yeah, so that's rotation in one direction. We can do the same thing. I can even just copy this. I uh, remember it's hash frame. Let's divide by 30 here. Now we have something like that. Maybe divide by 80. You can even do that for the Y. A frame divide by 90. Now uh, I think we can make the particles a bit larger. So I'm going to come to let me go back to the emitter here, particle settings, uh, increase the scale of the object, of the particles, where is that? Render, render. See that, that could also work. Let's scale them down. Randomize them more. Come back here. And we have that. You can uh, adjust the colors, adjust the alpha channel. However you want. Make the sphere more visible. Adjust the transmission. Maybe make it more visible. I can change the colors. And yeah, that's how you make. Yes, anyway, that's it. That's how you make a crystal ball like that.